Hello everyone, Professor Toybox here along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and we're back for our next episode of Toybox Tutorials. We've spent the past four weeks looking at each of the different kinds of cameras that are available in the toy box, and now we're going to revisit the target camera and look at some advanced camera techniques. To do that, I've built a frontier town here at the base of Pride Rock, here in my little Lion King toy box. When Mickey enters the town, he's going to be confronted by an outlaw, and I want to play a cutscene that shows the outlaw coming up the street to meet him, and that cutscene will lead up to a western-style showdown. My cutscene will be composed of six different kinds of camera shots, which are all fairly common in video production. Today I'll show you how to use the target camera to create these kinds of shots, and then next week we'll look at camera transitions and how to connect the multiple cameras together to create a single cutscene with an ordered sequence of shots. And I apologize for the longer episode today. Um, <laughs> can't really be helped, there's a lot to cover. So let's get started, and we'll look at some moving camera shots first. So we'll come in here to spark mode, and I've already set up some paths to save a little bit of time. So the first shot that I want for uh, my cutscene is an aerial shot, which will establish the scene and show where Mickey is in relation to where the action is as the outlaw enters the scene. And I want this to be a moving shot, so I'm going to need to put the camera on a path. And so that's what I've done here. So I've created this path and dropped a number of points around the town in kind of a circular pattern here. And it doesn't need to be too perfect, but um, the only things I've done is I've created the path and under the properties I changed the looped flag on to create a circle, circular path, and I turned off auto start objects when connected. And I don't need the full path for my shot, but in order to make the camera move along this part of the arc and have it move in a fairly close to a circular shaped path, I needed to complete the circle. And so that's what I've done there. And um, so we've looked at the properties. Let's go ahead and put the camera down. And again, we're going to use the target camera for all of these shots today. So I'll drop that here. And when Miss Mickey initially enters the scene, right now the camera properties are set up such that um, the camera target is all, which means all players. But I really want to show Mickey and this section down here at the end of the street. And so I've placed a locator here, kind of in the middle, which will hopefully include both Mickey and uh, the action at the end of the street. So we're going to go ahead and connect up this camera to that locator. So I'll do a new locator connection. And again, I put the locator down earlier to save time. I've already kind of measured all of this out to figure out where this is all going to go. So now that we've connected that to that locator, and that's our camera target, we'll go ahead and set the properties for this camera. And under here, we're going to leave the camera transition, the start transition to cut, define transition off, which means this one doesn't matter, camera type follow is fine, this is fine, triggering player is fine, glow through, I'm going to turn that off. Um, the camera target needs to be the connected locator, so we change that. We're going to leave this on, which means that doesn't matter, and we'll leave both of these set at zero. And now again, I've already turned off the auto start when connected on, so we'll leave that uh, as it is, and we'll go ahead and connect the camera to the path. And so we're going to do a new path connection on the camera. I'm going to connect that to this path. And the camera jumps over there right away. Now I don't really want the camera to start looking directly down the street. I kind of like to be it, have it be off-center a little bit. And so we're going to come into the camera properties one more time. And if we go all the way to the bottom, there is now a toy box path category, which we've kind of seen on some other toys. We also have additional toy box path properties, and I'm going to cover those in a few minutes. 
So we'll look at this one first. For all of these, speed of 100 is fine. We're not going to orient along the path because I want to have the camera facing that locator. All of these properties are fine, uh, except the reset point. I want to change this to be 10. So we're going to move the camera when we reset to 10% of the way around the path, which will put it about where I want it to be. And the rest of these are all fine. And we'll leave the movement style set to loop. All right, so there's the camera. It's attached to the path. And you'll note it's actually going to start 10% of the way around the path, so about right here, except that um, I haven't reset it yet, so it's still sitting over here. So I've dropped a button over here. Let's go ahead and hook this up. So we'll do a new logic connection, and right now I'm just going to use buttons and other controls to trigger all of these individual shots. We'll string them all together the right way next week, but just for each individual shot to show how they work. So when the button is pressed, I'm going to come up to the camera, and I'm going to activate the camera, and that will turn the camera on. But to get it moving, I need to do another connection. So we'll do a new logic connection on the button when pressed. I'm going to come up to the path. There we go. And we'll do a reset and play. And that will jump the camera to the 10% point and start it moving around the path. And now the next question is, is when do we stop the shot? And I think I want to stop it when I get over to this path point. And so on this point, I'm going to open the logic menu and we'll do a new logic connection. When the point is reached by the object on the path, we'll come over to the camera and deactivate it. And it's also going to continue moving around the path unless I stop that. So we'll go ahead and do one more logic connection. When the point is reached by the object on the path, we'll come over to the path creator and do a reset and stop. And there we go. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. That should give us a nice aerial shot of the town. And that looks pretty good. I can see the start of the town. I can see the end of the street where some of the action is going to be. And that looks really good. Okay, now the next shot that I want to do, well, let's go down to the end of the street first because there's a little bit of setup down here that I've done, and I should show you what I've got down here. So right now, come into spark mode, I've got a few locators set up down here. And I've got another path. This is the path where that the uh, at enemy, the outlaw, is going to walk as he comes into town. And so I've got an enemy wave generator here. And we'll open up the logic menu for that. And under the configure wave, I've already taken the liberty of putting in Cavendish's TNT man as my outlaw. And that'll save a little time scrolling in that long, slow list. And under the properties, the only thing I've changed here is I've taken the generation delay to zero and I'm disabling the generation effects. And we're going to go ahead and connect up that enemy wave generator to this locator because I want that enemy to appear there. And then I want him to walk that path. And so we're going to connect up the enemy wave generator to the path with a new path connection. And we'll connect it up to this path. And that path, if we look at the properties for that, I've set the speed to 20, which is a good slow walking speed. And I've left auto start objects when connected on. So really the only thing I've changed here is the speed. And I kind of figured where I wanted the start and stop point to be. 
Now at some point when Mickey enters the town and this whole cutscene begins, I'm going to trigger this enemy wave generator to spawn the enemy. And he's just going to appear out of thin air. And so one of the things I want to do to try to cover that, and also set kind of some interesting ambiance for the scene, is I've put down an effects generator. And so we're going to connect this up to these uh, locators. So I'm going to connect that to the same locator here. And I've put uh, two extra locators down because uh, in the process of experimenting, one wasn't quite enough. And this seemed to be, for my shot anyway, uh, whoops, did not want to do that. <laughs> Went into point mode. And that stuck me way down there. But in the process of creating the shot, I just determined that having those locators where they are for the effect that I want works pretty well. All right, so I've connected that effects locator now to those three shots. And just for today, we'll go ahead and connect up a couple of buttons to that. So we'll do a new logic connection on this one when pressed. And I'll start the smoke effects. So we're going to play looped. And we'll come down to the smoke category. And we're going to do large area smoke. And we'll use this other button here to turn that effect off. So we'll stop looping the effects. And what that will do, let me come out here and push that button. That will create a nice smoke effect that's pretty thick right about here. So that will cover the enemy spawning in. And what's nice is, is from Mickey's standpoint down here at the end of the street, he's going to see all of this thick smoke and then this shadowy figure is going to come walking out of the smoke. and He's going to be kind of hard to see until he gets, uh, gets clear of the smoke. And so that'll be a nice little effect. Um, be nice visually, and it covers up the enemy just spawning out of nowhere. So we'll go ahead and stop that effect. So that's what we've got set up down here at the end of this path. Now when that enemy shows up, Mickey's going to be at this end of the street. And so I want to set up a shot where when Mickey comes into the scene, um, we're going to see Mickey's standpoint as he's looking down the street. And I want to start directly behind Mickey, which will also help cover up that enemy wave generator spawning the enemy. But I'd like the camera to kind of pan to the side from out from behind Mickey so we can see down the street at what Mickey is seeing. And so what I've done for this shot is I've set up this little short path. And if we come into the properties for this, I've set the speed to 12 and I've turned off the auto start objects when connected. So my second shot here is going to be a pan shot. And that's what I'll show you how to build now. And so let me grab the uh, screenshot that I've got here and my notes. So we're going to place this camera for right now, um, just back over here out of the way. And we'll go ahead and connect it up to that path. Like that. And... Um, let me see. Let's go ahead and set the properties next. So under the properties, for this one, we're going to use cut. Again, this will be off. Display duration doesn't matter. This is all fine. Glow through, we'll turn that off. The camera target, we're going to leave it set as all right now, which would be all players. And I'll show you why that isn't going to work here in a moment. Um, we'll leave that on so this won't matter. And I'll leave these properties set the way they are for now. And again, we'll come under Toy Box Path. And all of these are fine, but I want to change the movement style to one way and stop. And now to start this, and actually to start the entire sequence, next week when we build the whole cutscene, 
I'm going to set up a trigger area over top of the entrance to town. And we'll use the trigger area today just to kick off this particular shot. So when Mickey crosses that line, yeah, then uh, we'll go ahead and activate our shot. So do a new logic connection when entered by player any. I'm going to come over to the camera and activate it. And again, that only turns the camera on. It doesn't start it moving. So we'll do another co logic connection on the trigger area when entered by player any. Come over to the path creator and do a reset and play. And that will start the camera moving along this path. And when we get to this point, just like the other path, we're going to do a new logic connection when the point is reached by the object on the path. For today, I'll deactivate this camera and we'll also reset the camera and stop it moving. So new logic connection when the point is reached by the object on the path. Uh, whoops. <laughs> oh, I already had that. Okay. From earlier, I had already made that connection. When the point's reached by the object on the path, we'll do a reset and stop. So basically, it's almost the same as the previous shot that we did. The difference is I'm kicking it off with a trigger area, and instead of moving in a circular path, this one's going to move to the side. So let's see how this works. So Mickey's going to walk into town, and I'll try to walk down the center of the street. And you'll notice two problems. First of all, the camera's staying focused on Mickey, and I really want it looking down the street. And the second thing you'll notice <laughs> is that we're kind of half in the ground, and so the camera has jumped down to the path level, and that path level is right on the ground. And so to fix that, what we're going to need to do is a couple of things. So we'll come to the camera. We'll go under the properties. And in order to get the camera up a little higher, we're going to set the vertical offset. And I'm going to set this to minus 3. I had to double check my notes. So now when we walk into town, that's what I thought. That was actually the wrong direction. <laughs> I had minus three on my notes, but uh, actually that's not quite right. So let's go ahead and change that. I think that needs to be one, actually. We're going to set that to one. That should get it up just high enough above the end of the ground so that the ground is not in the shot. And I actually am going to need that at minus 3, but for right now. So that fixes the height of the shot, but you'll notice <laughs> it's still focusing on Mickey. And the problem is the camera target is set to all, but what I really want, what I'm really interested in, isn't so much Mickey. It's what's going on down here at the end of the street. And so the camera target shouldn't be the player. So for a pan shot like this, you want to have the target be kind of a long ways away. So I'm going to do a new locator connection. And I'm going to use the same locator down here where the enemy is spawning in. That'll be our camera target. And then we'll come back to the properties. We need to change the camera target from all to be the connected locator. And there's one more change we're going to need to make, but let's go ahead and see what we've got. So we walk into the center of town, and now you'll notice <laughs> the camera is up higher than Mickey. But we've got the side to side pan movement that we want. And so by connecting to the locator way down there, that's actually caused the camera to sit up higher for some reason than it was before. 
And so now we'll go ahead and put that vertical offset down to minus 3. And if I put it at minus 4, this is basically going to be right at the same level it was where we started. 3 will put it right at ground level without cutting into the ground. All right, and so now come to the middle of the street. We walk into the shot. And now we have the side-to-side -side pan movement with Mickey off to the side. So I like that. And Mickey should probably appear in the shot a little bit over to the right. And there's a little bit of stickiness in this. Oops. Went too far. And then he's too far off to the right, so <laughs> have to play around with this a little bit. Ideally, what I would probably do is place a locator there with a radar marker. And uh, that would tell the player exactly where I want them to go. But for today, this works pretty well. So Mickey's in just about the right spot right there. So that's how you make a pan shot. And uh, it's similar again to the aerial shot, but the movement's in a straight line and the target's far away, so the camera continues looking in the same direction as it moves. Now the third shot that I want to create for my little scene is a tracking shot. And a tracking shot basically follows the camera target. And it's kind of like the default player camera here, where as I go with Mickey, the camera moves with me. And in my case, I want it to follow the enemy. And uh, I want the camera to be following closely behind the outlaws. They're walking up the street so that you kind of only see their uh, feet and legs and see them kind of walking up the street. So that's kind of the shot that I would like. And so the camera needs to be kind of low to the ground to get that shot. And so once again, to save time, as I mentioned, I've already put down the path that I need. And we've already hooked up the enemy wave generator here, so that's good. So let's go ahead and take care of the camera now. And these shots, the tracking shot, the pan shot, the uh, aerial shot are all very similar, but there's some differences here that I'm kind of focusing on. And so that's why I'm doing all of these different kinds of shots, because they're all a little bit different. And for right now, we're going to set this camera right here. And, um, yeah. So we've already looked at the path properties. Okay, let's go ahead and set the camera properties next. I was just looking at my notes to make sure I hadn't skipped anything. But we've already covered the smoke effects and the uh, enemy wave generator, so we're good. So let's look at the properties on this camera. Now, well, actually, before we even do that... Well, no, let's go ahead and do that. Sorry. Okay, so for this one, for the tracking shot, we're going to leave cut on. And this time I'm going to use a defined duration, and we'll leave it set at the maximum of 10 seconds. Follow is fine, cut's fine, triggering player is fine. Glow through will turn that off, because otherwise Mickey is going to show up as a green outline <laughs> through the outlaw. And the camera target, we're going to change this in a second, but I'll leave it that for now. Uh, we'll leave this on, which means that doesn't matter. And for right now, we'll leave these set the way they are. Alright, so the camera is ready to go. Our actor for the camera, though, is going to be the enemy. And um, you may recall from our first look at the target camera back in episode 49 that we can connect the camera to a townsperson or an enemy as an actor. And I showed you an example of how that works when I connected the target camera to Rex. Ideally, I'd like to do that same thing here, but there's a problem. And uh, I'll show you what that is. So if we do a new actor connection, it's going to allow us to connect up to the enemy wave generator as an actor. 
just like we've done with other toys. And so that looks really promising. And we come into this uh, camera, back to the properties, and we change the camera target to be the connected actor. And so far, so good. Everything looks great. And if we use the camera position to set the zoom distance, the enemy is going to appear just out in front of the camera. And the camera should follow behind the enemy as it's walking. And we kind of saw that with Rex, even though the camera was off to the side. But let's go ahead and hook up the button and see what happens. So first thing we'll do is a new logic connection when pressed. I need to come over here and generate our enemy. So we'll generate the wave. And I also need a button to defeat the enemy and get rid of him so I don't have to fight him every time we do this. So we'll use that button to defeat the wave. The other thing I want to do is turn that camera on. So we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. And I could come over here and activate this camera, but the enemy isn't going to be there right away. Even though the enemy generation is set to zero for that delay, it won't be there right away. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Let's come over to the enemy wave generator and we'll do a new logic connection from here and we'll do on wave generated. So once the enemy is there, we'll come over and activate the camera. And in theory, that should work. Well, let's see what happens. So we push the button. The enemy appears and starts walking the path but that camera never activates. <laughs> and you're like, what the heck? That should have worked. Let me defeat the enemy. And I think what happens is that the game will let me connect the target camera to the enemy wave generator as an actor, but it doesn't actually work because the camera doesn't recognize that generated enemy as an actor. Um, I think maybe that's because the friendly wave and enemy wave generators and even the friend and enemy generators can generate multiple townspeople or multiple enemies. And the camera is not smart enough to know just to use the one if all you've got is one. And so we'll have to do something else to get the kind of shot that I want. And I don't really want to just place the enemy in, into this toy box like I did with Rex and put him in here directly. I really want him to show up when I'm ready for him to show up. And so... In order to be able to use the enemy wave generator the way I want, we kind of have to use a little trick. And so that's what I'm going to uh, set up now and show you how to do that. So the first thing we'll do, let's come into this uh, camera. And I'm going to come down and delete this link to the enemy wave generator. So the enemy wave generator will not activate that camera when the enemy is generated. And because I can't do um, connect it to the actor and have the camera follow it, what I'll need to do is connect this camera to this path as well. And so we'll do a new path connection. And the camera is going to start moving right away because I had the auto start property turned on. And so let's come in here to the camera. Luckily, it's moving slow enough that we can grab it. And we're going to change a couple of things here. I'm um, going to leave the duration set. Uh, we're going to leave these all fine. Instead of a connected actor, I'm going to connect to a locator. And I'll connect that in a moment. So we'll change this to be a connected locator. That's what we're going to focus on. We'll leave uh, the this set to true, dirt to on, which means these don't really matter just yet. And under the toy box path, all of these are going to be fine. We want to change the movement style to one way and stop. Okay. And then in order to put that camera back, we'll come down to this point down here and we'll do a new logic connection when the point is reached by the object on the path. 
I'm going to come to the camera, to toy box path, and we'll do a reset and stop. And I'm going to the camera and not the path because both the enemy and the camera are attached to this path. And if I go to the path creator and do a reset and stop or a reset and play or whatever, then that's going to affect both the enemy and the camera. And I don't want to do that. So as you can see, the camera jumped back here to the start of the path. Now, both the enemy and the camera are sitting here at this same point, And I need this camera to follow the enemy. And so what I'm going to do for today to get this to work the way I want is I'm going to set up a trigger area along this path. I'm going to do something a little bit different next week, but for today this should work. And I'm going to put this trigger area right in front of this camera like this. And so on the on the button over here to kick this off, this is going to generate the enemy. And the enemy will spawn over at that locator, walk to that path, and start walking the path. And so we'll start the camera when the enemy steps foot inside this trigger area. And so we'll, on the trigger area, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by AI enemy. We're going to come over to the camera and activate the camera. And the other thing this needs to do is start the camera moving along the path. And so we'll do a new logic connection when entered by AI enemy. Come over to the path creator. Or nope, sorry. Because that would affect both the enemy and the camera. So we'll do a new logic connection when entered by AI enemy. What I'd like to do is come to the camera and start it moving, but I can't do that because I've already made a logic connection from that trigger area to the camera. And so I've set up a logic gate over here, and we'll input to that gate instead. And the gate will do a new logic connection on output, then we'll come over to the camera, and under toy box path, we'll do a reset and play. And now that will start the camera moving along the path behind the enemy. And that should be everything we need. So let's go ahead and see how this works. Oh, whoop, one more thing. Camera needs a target. <laughs> I set it to a locator, but I haven't connected it to one. So we'll do a new locator connection. And I'm going to use, I think, uh, did I use this locator? Yeah. We'll use the same locator that we used for that other path up there as our camera target. All right, so now let's see what happens. So we'll push the button. And that starts the camera, which I did not want to do. <laughs> and the camera was actually above the enemy. All right. Let that camera walk down the path. So I forgot something here. Let's see. So that's going just to the enemy wave generator. The enemy wave generator... still has a connection to the target camera. Yeah, so we need to delete that link. All right, the other thing you noticed was that camera was up pretty high. And you couldn't actually see the enemy. And I want this to be at ground level. So once again, we'll come into the properties and I'm gonna set the vertical offset to minus three which should put it on the ground level without clipping the ground. So 
So now the enemy should appear and start walking the path. When he enters the trigger area, there we go. And so that kind of gives us the tracking shot that I was looking for, is the enemy walking down the street towards Mickey. And that looks like a nice ominous shot. I like that. Okay, so those are some of the different kinds of movement shots that you can make. By connecting the target camera to a path, you can create aerial shots, pan shots, and tracking shots. And uh, you can also create shots that zoom in or out on a subject, and I'm not going to do that today. If you want to see an example of that, check out episode 3 of my storytelling mini-series, where I created a shot that looks at the starfighter that you need for the mission, and zooms out from there to where the player is, so the player can see how to get there. Now, before we look at some of the other shots, which uh, should go a little quicker than this, I want to take a look at those other path properties. And so I've set up a camera over here with a path and a button. And what I've done for the path is I've just created a path down that way. And uh, we're not going to loop it. We're just going to turn off the auto start objects when connected. And I'm going to go ahead and connect that camera to the path. And we'll set the camera properties. So once again, cut is fine, off is fine. All of these are fine. Glow through, we'll turn that off. Camera target, I'll leave that as all so it looks at Mickey. And the rest of this is all fine for our example. And I'll just set the vertical offset to 1. Under toy box path, the only thing I want to change here is the movement style to back and forth. And then we've got some additional toy box properties under here. And I'll explain to you what these are in just a moment. But there's three of them. Okay, and then we're going to come to the button and do a new logic connection when pressed, and I'll activate the camera. And I am not going to go to the path and have it move along the path. So we'll come to the button, and we activate it, and you'll notice the camera stays where it is, because it's not moving along the path. It doesn't have the freedom to move because it's been attached to the path. So even though it's set to follow, it's kind of working like the focus um, camera style. So let me go ahead and exit out of that view. Okay, so what do these properties do? Well, let's come back into those and let's uh, look at them one at a time. So the first thing we'll do is come down to those additional properties. And I'm going to turn on follow targets movement. And what this is going to do is allow the camera to move itself along that path in order to follow the player. And so as we come over here and demo that, we start off, now the camera you see is not looking at an angle at the button, it's looking straight on. And as I move Mickey back and forth, you can see the camera is following along that path. And if I go past where the camera is at the end of the path, now it's going to turn to follow Mickey, because it can't move any further. And so you can kind of get a side-to-side -side effect like this, which is, uh, with this camera, sort of like the sidestep camera, but you've got that camera attached to a path. Now, there's two other properties under there. And you'll notice when I activated the camera, it did a cut, which is what you would normally expect. If I turn this property on, this will work similar to what the swing camera transition looks like up here under start, if that were to actually work. Um, but it's a little bit different, similar but different. And so the camera right now is facing down along that path. And if I push the button, you'll see the camera is swinging from that angle to look over at Mickey. And then from there, it's going to move like what we had already seen. 
And so the movement though is a little bit sluggish. As you can see when you turn that property on. And so for that, we have one more property under there that governs that. And if we come down to additional toy box path properties, and we have this per step transition smoothing percentage. Let's take that up to like 60. And then come over and push the button. <coughs> And now you can see the camera whipped right around there. And now it's a little bit more responsive as Mickey is moving along the path. And so that's what those properties do, is it uh, allows the camera to move as needed along the path. Normally, to get the camera to move along the path, like we did with those other shots, we'd go to the path or we'd go to the camera and have it do a start or a reset and play or something like that. But then the camera moves at a consistent speed down that path and it can't really change without another logic connection reversing its direction or whatever. But this way, that property allows that camera to uh, control itself and move along the path as needed. So that's what that does. Okay, so now, um, I think that covers the camera cameras and paths pretty well. Let's move on to some other kinds of shots, and these will be a little bit easier. Another shot I want for my cutscene is a close-up shot. And uh, I want a close-up of Mickey after the outlaw appears. And so I'm going to drop a trigger here, and we'll put it right here for now. And I'm going to drop down another camera. Oop, target camera. And I kind of want to show Mickey... That's why I'm doing it from this direction. And for this shot, we'll go ahead and set the camera properties. Once again, we'll use cut. I'm going to use a defined duration this time, and we'll set it to four seconds. That should be long enough. These are all fine. We'll turn glow through off. The camera target is fine for right now. I'm going to take this off and set the zoom distance to be the smallest I can set it, which is four. And the rest of these will leave set the way they are for right now. And then we'll come to the trigger and we'll do a new logic connection when stepped on by player, any. We'll activate this camera. All right, so I've got that camera as close as I can get it to Mickey. And so we'll step on the, the thing here, and that's as close as we can get. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, even with the zoom distance set to the minimum value of 4, I can't really get close enough to Mickey for a proper close-up shot. And so we're going to have to use a little trick here, because that's really kind of a full body shot, not really a close-up. So what we'll do instead is I've dropped a locator way out here. And we're going to connect up this camera to that locator. And that'll be our camera target. So it's actually going to look past Mickey. And in doing that, we're going to be able to move the camera closer to Mickey because it's not actually looking at Mickey directly. So the camera target then needs to be the connected locator. And I'm going to use this property again to set the zoom distance. And this time, I'm going to slide this up halfway onto that uh, trigger. And so now when we step on that trigger, you can see we're pretty close to Mickey, but we're actually a little too high. So once again, we have to set a vertical offset on this camera. Because that's easy to fix. The offsets allow you to fix these kinds of things. And again, I'll set this to minus three, which will put it right on the ground. Okay, and as we step on the camera, 
Now we've got a good close-up of Mickey. So that's how you would do a close-up shot. Um, of course, this trick assumes that the player isn't going to move after the camera is activated, but it lets, it get a, lets us get a proper close-up shot, which can be useful if you want to use Disney Infinity as a video production medium, or you want to build a cutscene. Now the fifth shot that I want is an over-the-shoulder shot, and this is going to work very similar to that. And what I want to do is I would like to have a shot looking over Mickey's shoulder down the street. And of course here I can't place this camera directly on top of that one because we have the collision boundary. And um, I could place the over the shoulder camera first and then connect the other one to this path and that would force the two cameras to occupy the same space. But I want to show you another trick that you can use when you run into this situation. And so ideally I want this to be right here, but we're going to move the camera up and over. And I'm actually going to place it about right there. But of course, since I can't really do that, um, I'm already using that trigger area to activate another shot. We'll kind of do this off to the side over here. And I'll use a button instead to activate this. And this will just kind of show you how this would work. But the same basic principle applies. We're going to look at a locator that's further away. And we'll connect up to this same locator down here. And once again, we'll come into the camera properties. And we'll do a duration of four seconds. All of these are fine. Turn glow through off. Camera target will be the connected locator looking past Mickey down the street. We'll leave the camera position set for the zoom distance. And now since we're actually up higher, we just need to set this vertical offset smaller. So I had it set at minus three for when it was below um, at ground level and it's actually sitting up higher. So I'll set this to minus six to compensate for that. And for an over-the-shoulder shot, you can ch change the horizontal offset to whatever you need. And I'm going to set it to minus two. And that'll look over Mickey's uh, left shoulder, I believe. And then we'll use the button to activate the camera. So new logic connection when pressed. Come up to the camera and activate it. And when we push the button, we're looking over Mickey's shoulder down the street. Okay, the last shot that I want is a low angle shot. And this is going to be a shot when the, um, we're gonna need another button, uh, a shot that'll be looking up at the enemy when they reach the end of that path. And so I'll drop another button over here to do this. And we're gonna drop another camera And we're going to be looking at the end of that path there. And so for this shot, we'll put that right here like this. And I'm going to connect up to that locator that's sitting up there above that wagon. It's actually above the path. And so we'll do a new locator connection. And I'm going to connect up to this locator that's up in the air. And um, setting up this camera is similar to the last two shots, but again, the difference is, is where we place the locator. This determines not only the closeness of the subject, but also the angle at which you view it. And so this is going to be looking up at that locator. And so we'll set the properties on this once again. We'll do a duration of four seconds. All of these are fine. Glow through off, camera target, connected locator. And we're going to leave all of these set. And for the horizontal offset, again, we'll put this at ground level by setting that to minus three. And I'm going to connect the button to that camera to activate it. 
And now I need a <laughs> subject, something to look at. I don't have the enemy there right now. But we'll use this little signpost that I dropped earlier from the decorations drawer. And I'll set that you know, right out here. So I want the camera to be about one block away from the subject. And so this camera will actually sit a half a block closer because the enemy is going to be standing there. But for right now, we'll use that as our subject. And oops. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see what we've got. So now that's kind of looking up, upward at that uh, flag. So that's how you can create some of the common kinds of camera shots that you see in video production. I didn't cover every possible kind of shot, but the techniques I've covered today should give you everything you need to create any kind of camera shot that you want. At this point, I have all the different shots that I need for my cutscene. So next time, we'll look at how to transition between all these different cameras and string all of the various camera shots together to create a single cutscene that tells a story. Until then, I want to thank you for watching and for sticking with this longer episode today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel or follow me on my blog so you don't miss the next episode. That's all for me today. I'll see you next time.